One take a million. <laughs> One take a million? <laughs> Let me tell you, I <laughs> really take for granted when Chris is here and setting yeah. up our shop because I am now sweating. It's been 30 minutes. We've been trying to get this <laughs> podcast going. And here, I still don't know if we're too blown out or if this is going to work nope. whatsoever. Shane Dawson from the <laughs> Shane Dawson podcast just framed us up. I'm feeling really good about it. Yeah, I, started, I was like full blown meltdowning. And I Shane! go, I heard Shane walk down the stairs. I'm like, get down here. So here we are, another episode in Colorado, and we're very excited to be here. We are indeed. Shall we introduce ourselves? I guess so, because we forget almost every other episode. Hello, hello, everybody, and welcome to another episode of The Sip. I'm Ryland Adams, of course, joined by... Elizabeth Home, okay. Welcome back. Oh, hello. <laughs> <laughs> so Lizzie did some crazy girl shit. She's a jet setter. She is a actual jet setter. Like yeah. we were supposed to record this episode in California, but you got uh, held up living that jet setter life up in Northern California, up in the Bay, repping her hometown. Mm-hmm. <laughs> if it's not the eight three one, it's the nine two five. The real ones now, you know. And I don't know. No, you don't. Okay, so do you want to tell us a little bit about your getaway? A little bit. Oh, I wouldn't call it a getaway. <laughs> no, it was, um, <clears throat> you give me my water? Yeah. Thank you. This throat, she's dry. So, oh God, it's, there's nothing I hate more than the sound of a fucking swallow through a straw. <laughs> Good Lord, that's enraging. Apologies, audience. Um, so I went up north with my best friend and her entire family including my goddaughter, Lily, mm. who's the biggest chunk of monk and she had her first flight. It was her very first? It was her very first flight, and she was a really good girl the whole time. Did she cry? No. She's not verbalizing yet, right? She does a couple of funny things. So she like she talks like a dolphin, kind of like, <laughs> like which is really funny. Like, Haley's always tripping because she's like, shouldn't she be like babbling? Like, blah, 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 blah. And she's going, <laughs> it's the funniest thing. So we'll all just sit there for like 30 minutes going, <laughs> like back at her, like we're a couple of fucking idiot dolphins. But she's a she's a er, not a babbler. Mm-hmm. Um, but she came like right off the plane and like reached her arms open for me and like smiled like she knows who the fuck I am. <laughs> well, she watches you every each and every week on the sip. She does, and we watched the sip with with each other, <laughs> which was uh, funny and weird. <clears throat> and uh, you know, we had a fondue party, baby's first fondue party with cheese or chocolate or what? Cheese. She didn't with? have any of it. Did you get? Did you get the video? No, of course not. Oh my god, it's so cute. I'll send you the asset because it devastates me. But hold on, here it is. Oh. Baby's first fondue party. Baby's first fondue party. Baby's first fondue party. Yes, it is. Oh God, no. <laughs> so she can't fondue. No, she can't fondue, but we fondued anyway. <laughs> she attended the party, and she was a pleasure to be around. So that was super fucking cute and really fun, really fun, really fresh. Mm-hmm. And then Haley stayed in Livermore, and her husband flew back with the baby. And I flew back the same day, so I was able to, like, help him. And it was so fun being in the airport and having people, like, see this beautiful baby and be like, Mama, you did good. And it's like, I'm not her mama, but I didn't correct them because I'm a fucking creep. (laughs) So then Lizzie gets home and comes to Colorado for one day. She flew in this morning to record some podcasts, and she's flying out tonight. She wouldn't even hang out with me and go to the local festival called Parker Days. You know I'm dying to go to Parker Days. Well, you could have spent the night, and we could have stayed there all night. I miss my puppy. Blacking out on delicious food and going on sketchy amusement park roller coasters, but you wanted nothing to do with me. They don't have roller coasters there. They have, like, a fucking Ferris wheel. There's nothing I trust less. Like, I'm already afraid of roller coasters that were built to be in one place yeah traveling roller it's coasters not something or you, rides and, yeah swings i i have to question the validity of the safety of a traveling ride and it's yeah and it's who's running it like locals in each town's teenagers <laughs> what's ironic is i drove by yesterday and the ferris wheel it's like they're sponsored by a local hospital and it's like it's <laughs> of course they are because <laughs> the hospital's making all the money back with the acts with the injuries <laughs> <laughs> But we did have a fun breakfast at our favorite fucking cafe, mm. Heritage. Shout out. Today I had the breakfast burrito with the queso on it. Like, my God. Begging the owner to move to Los Angeles. I think he should. Did you have a good flight in? No. 
Absolutely not. I did not have a good flight in. I don't. I, it's it's so strange. It's like we, we were talking about the other week. Motherfuckers be coughing up a storm. And they're like wet coughs. Well, I was I was reading some of the comments on the last one, and they said a lot of people that smoke weed just have a smoker's cough, and that they uh, these are old fucking people <laughs> that look like they're Colorados. I I don't know. <laughs> uh, no offense, no offense, people from Colorado. But here's the deal: y'all got some wet ass coughs, <laughs> and put the, the like pulling the mask down to cough. That's what pulling I mean. the mask down to cough. <laughs> what i know why are you wearing a mask if you're gonna pull it down to cough of all things i told you and when we flew on southwest because it's uh unassigned seating yeah oh my gosh i've never felt worse for flight attendants in my entire life because it's a free-for-all zoo and once you get inside that aircraft yeah and everyone is so rude everyone's yeah. trying to fight for their lives to get a seat next yeah. to whoever they want to sit next to and it is just a zoo but we were watching uh real housewives of beverly hills and when the ladies they all like took a girl's trip together mm -hmm. and when they landed they started clapping yeah and shane looked over to me and he said are they clapping because they survived the flight and I started thinking, yeah, that's really dark when you think about it. Because often when you're on planes, people start clapping when you land. I think part of it could be an excitement for a destination. In Colorado, it's definitely like, oh, we fucking thank God. Oh, we didn't crash because that turbulence is crazy. <sighs> Coming over those Rocky Mountains is, is bonkers. A terrifying. There's I'm so glad I know about it because if I didn't, I'd be like, oh, 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 oh. <laughs> turning my phone off airplane mode sending my goodbyes to joe <laughs> but i started thinking about other scenarios in which i clap after it's been done and it's always sex no i've never done that round of applause for myself that was the best performance of my life shane you're welcome <laughs> but the other place I do it is in a yoga class when like collectively the energy is right, right. at the end yeah. everyone starts clapping yeah. and I told Shane I was like well it's not just airplane rides it's also when we have a fantastic yoga class the community comes together yeah. and claps and he's like that's fucking weird it's honestly not though we do it at Orange Theory when it's a good class really yeah I've done it at camp with Matthew I've, it's, people clap give yourselves a hand you showed up for yourselves today is it instructor? But I'm talking not instructor prompted. Just like somebody starts I think it, it no, and everybody I, goes. I think it's instructor prompted. I think you're not hearing the instructor. No, in yoga? No, 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 no. Are you sure? It's never because sometimes I'll be, if I was like, it's just wow, spontaneous hands down, clapping. I'll just, I'll start the clapping because you're like, wow, we just went through that and achieved that together. But when Shane so looked over at me, he said, I would never finish the elliptical. You're starting the clapping? Uh, yeah, sometimes. Does anyone else? Start I mean, the I didn't start the clapping so this before. Is a I knew it was something out of the norm. Like sure? somebody else started the clapping in a different class, but in my ten years of yoga, now yeah, I'll start the clapping for the instructor. Wow. If I thought she served a fucking class and it really yeah. got me going, I'll start the clap for that bitch or him or her. I don't know. The, the, but I feel like bitch is a unisex. Okay. I just thought it was interesting because then, yeah, Shane was like, that's fucking weird. And then he said, I would never finish the elliptical and start clapping. Well, that's and because like, it's that's an that's independent activity. Setting. Yeah. Yeah. But interesting nonetheless. I do love on set when somebody is wrapped for like picture wrapped, meaning they're done shooting their role and they won't be back. The AD always goes, that's a picture wrap on so and so. And everyone just goes ape shit. Like, <laughs> like it's my fucking favorite and to i me, love a picture rap. that makes a little more sense because it's a performance right it's something that is more in the norm but i i agree with you it is very fun and i don't know i think clapping must release some sort of serotonin because i saw the cutest thing on instagram which was just this dog like throwing your dog a spontaneous surprise party and they just come in from going into the bathroom and all the people that live in the house come around and they just go yes yes and the dog's like fuck yeah dude and they just get so excited and it's the cutest shit i've ever seen like the whole body of the dog is wiggling like both different directions it's everything i mean yeah you're gonna have to start doing that to potty train your puppy we do do that oh my god all the dogs get treats when he does it on his pad every single one of them <laughs> you get a treat and you get a treat and you get a treat yeah but that also creates a disaster like my parents dogs mm -hmm. because they treat potty trained them now my mom's full-time job after 6 p.m is the animals <laughs> psyching her out to what they like go to the door yeah and they annoy you to go to let you to tell you they're i need not to go out to pee, but they're only going out to come back and get a treat and yeah. then they try it every 15 minutes until my mom goes to bed and she goes okay no more treats after 6 p.m that is so funny because they're trained that they get a treat <laughs> if they go outside i love that for Vicky. so you've got to cap that well that's like point. jelly going to the kitchen to check on the food she's like yeah it's all here should we 
taste it? <laughs> Should we taste this? It's three o'clock in the morning. I just want to make sure this food's not going bad. Je- jelly last night I was telling you on the way in Jelly last night gets out of bed she goes we should go check the kitchen and I'm like fuck bitch I gotta be up at five like do we really need to go do we gotta go check the kitchen right now she's like we should really go check the kitchen <laughs> so I was like okay girl let's go check the fucking kitchen like maybe she has to go potty and like I'll never risk it but this is how manipulative she is she's learned that she can fake potty so we'll go to the kitchen and I'm like oh bitch let's go back to bed we're going back to bed and she goes no 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 you're right I have to pee I should pee so she goes out goes fake pee comes back she's like still in the kitchen like i think we should check the food i'm like we're not checking the food you fat whore so then we're like she goes over and she's like no i'm thirsty you're right i just needed some water she drinks all of the puppies water that's her new thing she's obsessed with finishing the puppies water do your dogs not have collective water no because he doesn't have all of his shots so we don't want them sharing water so she has a water he has a water and whenever she finishes his water i have to clean his bowl and refill it with water so she finishes his water and then he comes out of the bedroom so then he pees on the rug Mm -hmm. Then he pees on the rug. Bubs comes out of the bedroom. All of a sudden, it's the three of us in the kitchen checking on the food. (laughs) And then I go back to bed. And then all of them need to be slightly touching me. So I'm literally sleeping (laughs) like I'm in a sarcophagus, like with my arms crossed against my chest like this. Like I don't lose circulation. And Jelly's pressed against my back. So I'm sleeping a little bit like this. Bubs is pressed against my chest. And the baby now sleeps in the crook of my neck with his face on my face. And where's Joe? Who's Joe? (laughs) (laughs) I had to leave the bedroom this morning because yesterday she, Shane's had like a little bit of I don't know if it's seasonal allergies or what it is but he's yeah. having like a lot of congestion yeah. so because of the congestion he was snoring well he's not used to Colorado yeah and when you fly back and forth it's like the altitude really does mess yeah. with you and so he was Shane doesn't snore mm-hmm. but this violently woke me up so I kept kicking him I was like kicking him because he was waking me up and I I also had to be up to do things. And so finally after like he would fall, I'd kick him, he'd stop snoring. And then (laughs) you kick him two minutes later, he'd start snoring again. So I'd kick him again. And I I thought he was so asleep. He didn't recognize that I was kicking him. Why are you kicking him? We're not just like a little, hey, baby. Because I was was annoyed. (laughs) So I (laughs) fucking kicking him. And I was like, he can't, he doesn't know I'm kicking him. He's asleep. And then once he wakes up, he just thought he was woken up. And then like on the sixth kick, he goes, why are you kicking? (laughs) <laughs> and i was like oh justice for shane That's i didn't think so i'd fucked. ever get caught kicking and so <laughs> then i just had to wake up at 7 a.m when i wasn't ready to be awoken but then so this morning he came to bed at 5 a.m and i was like i'm not getting up right yeah. now and he goes well you could go to the other bedroom and so i got my ass up after trying to fall asleep for 30 minutes i took my ass to the guest bedroom because i you. couldn't handle it the guest bedroom's looking real cozy i am a little <laughs> sad i'm not sleeping in it tonight that bed looks warm and welcoming girl i am so tired i traveled with my pillow because i was like i'm gonna need to sleep there and back with with the amount of people coughing i don't know if it's appropriate to travel with a pillow ever. oh it was a bad choice it's always a bad choice you've got to throw away like, that pillowcase no i'm just gonna you wash know, it <sighs> i'm just gonna wash it i'm gonna take it off when i get did home people look at you funny i'm sure they did because i also took that pillow in the fucking bathroom which oh which brings me to this point when back to workout classes when you're you know how they're like hold a squat for as long as you can i'm like i fucking can't hold a squat i could go up and down but i can't hold a squat i can hold a squat for so long i learned today having to pee in that fucking airport bathroom i held that squat for damn near 90 seconds and what are you doing with your pillow i was holding the pillow in front of me so i have a weight i'm holding i'm holding weight it's a weighted squat and I'm squatting to pee and I'd held the pee so long that I kind of had to force it and I was just shocked by how long the stream was and how violent the stream was the entire time because you know I pee hard Mm. pee hard to go home so what's your uh what's your beef with Southwest it's actually not a beef it's a life hack Uh, oh yeah so I I think I miss I didn't explain to you properly what happened last week no I don't think you talked to me about it at all on Monday I believed I was leaving from the podcast to get on a plane. You need to be better at managing no, your calendar. No, this is no, this is what's confusing. This is what's I confusing. I can't I can't I can't. <laughs> I I did have a flight on Monday. But I wasn't supposed to. That was the miscommunication. I booked my flight and it's Southwest. So you know there's like that the three tiers, right? Mm-hmm. Like want to get away, cheap fucking bitch, and cheaper business. fucking bitch. Yeah. <laughs> I'm always the cheapest bitch option. You know what I mean? Like, give me that $68 fare. Like, I will board the plane last. I will hold on to the wing. I don't give a shit. It's a 45-minute flight. I don't care. So I'm, I'm on the cheapest bitch flight option. And I 
fucked up my flight because I was walk. I, that's the other thing. I walked to the airport. I parked my car at the studio that we shoot the educational videos at and mm-hmm. then walked the 20 minutes to the airport because why not? Ugh. I haven't been working out. I needed it. But then I get, I'm like, I thought it was also funny because that's like, I'm walking to the airport. Like, this is a funny thing. Like, this is <laughs> weird. So I sent a picture to Haley and I was like, walking to the airport. And she calls me. She goes, why? I go, what do you fucking mean why? To meet you in Oakland and go to your Papa's house. She's like, no, dude, we're going tomorrow. So I'm like, well, fuck it. I just go into the kiosk and I was like, hey, guys, I really fucked this shit up. I'm going to need a flight for tomorrow at the same time. And they were like, absolutely. No problem. Wow. No problem. Did it in and out five minutes. Then on Wednesday, when I decided I didn't want to fly home, I just called Southwest again. I was like, listen, guys, like, I want to extend my stay. Like, I'd like to fly home on Friday. And said, they're like, absolutely no problem. So why on God's green earth would anybody ever buy a ticket that's better than the cheapest b- bitch option when you can fly whenever the fuck you want once you buy a Southwest ticket? Well, I think they do that across the board if it's the business class or not the business class. But I that's what... Po- what is the business class on a Southwest flight? It means that you get to be like eight through ten, one through 10, meaning you get to board the plane first and choose your best seat. I guess that's just not something I value. Well, are you, you're traveling alone though. Like if you were traveling even with Joe, I, no, you'd want to sit next jo- to Joe. I don't sit next to Joe on planes anymore. <laughs> <laughs> one time we like begged people to let us sit next to each other. And then on the descent, he started vomiting. And I was like, don't know this guy. <laughs> Do not know him. He started vomiting? Yeah, I was so gnarly. He was vomiting in the throat bag, and I just turned away. Well, you give me- I can't do vomit. Oh. I don't do that. That's not something I fuck with. You give and you take with Southwest. It's a zoo, but you can rearrange your flight yeah, at and, any time. And sometimes you get really lucky, and it's not a full flight. Mm. And I've been more often than not in my own room. Okay. Well, speaking of your home, you named your puppy. Like, this is, I can't believe you didn't lead with this. I oh, know. now you're wafering. Well, is it wafering or waffling? I don't know. We're thinking about going uh, in on Icky. On Icky? Yeah, Icky boy. Icky nasty boy. <laughs> my little Icky boy. I like the nickname. He's my Icky. Because. Icky? Yeah. Hey, Icky. Mm hmm. I don't think so. I I do, because listen. Respectfully, Jelly I hate Bubs it. and Icky. Oh, I love it. Jelly I think it's so Bubs cute. and Icky. The other name that we were kind of thinking about was Sandwich. These. Uh, so you're trying to be a Kardashian and name like your children something crazy. No, Icky is short for Icarus. Okay. Because he's he's, <laughs> he's constantly just like just like Jelly. Like there's something about a French bulldog that just knows you're not gonna let it fall. So he's constantly just doing crazy fucking shit. And we're always like catching in midair, like, ah, Jesus. Like, so he's like a little bit like Icarus. Like, he's just too fucking bold, just like soaring too close to the sun and crashing and burning. But we mm. always catch him. So, Icky. <sighs> Icky home, okay. All right. I mean, if that's what you want to do. Why do you hate it? I just don't like it. Icky is like, what I don't would you know. call it's like, him? I guess there's like a TikTok trend of like, what gives you the ick? And I feel like. It's not that. It's not icky. It's icky short for Icarus. And what is Icarus? I can't get into it. It's a, it's <sighs> the guy who flew cl- too close to the sun and his wings burned up and he crashed and burned. It's like a lesson. It's like a lesson story an ancient lesson story you don't want to teach the class i just told you the story do you think the whole class already knows yes i do oh wow yeah oh wow it's like mentioned in like a lot of songs too like i don't know like it's a very big part of like everybody knows the story of icarus like it's like you know it so much that you can't really tell it but like in your body you know okay what if, it means it's if about his name's icarus and his nickname is icky yeah i guess yes okay He's a cutie boy. I was thinking like, I don't know. I do like sandwich, but I don't like calling for him for sandwich. I do like calling him icky. It doesn't feel solidified yet. It's hard. Like, cause I think, he, I think I'm just calling him baby mm. or tiny boy, little boy, tiny King. And the boys have no James is calling him little man and shithead. I did think shithead was funny. They're all nicknames though. Those aren't like name names. You can call him that. Right. But like we, Mr. Bubs isn't a name name. <sighs> I guess you're right. Yeah. Okay. There's no rules. No. And Who your am dog's I to judge? honey. Yeah. That was also a five month long naming process. Yeah. And it's because we couldn't come up with a name. So we'll, we'll see. We might be in that wagon, but I do think it's icky. Okay. I like icky. I think it's super cute. All right. Well, let us know what you guys think of the yeah, name. Yeah. Sound icky. off in the comment section below. We're not doing beans. We're not doing peanut butter. We're not doing marshmallow. So stop saying those. Who said that? Everyone. In the comments? Yeah, on my Instagram. Oh. Did you ask what you should name him? I did. Oh. (laughs) 
<laughs> I did. Thank you. Thank you for the submissions and sorry for being ungrateful. <laughs> was, I'm going to go with icky instead. <laughs> I think it's cute. I don't think it's not cute. Yes, you do. All you right. said I hate it. That was the first thing you said. <laughs> and just then, that was like the liest lie I've ever seen. It's like trying to be polite, but also getting off the subject. Well, yeah, I was thinking I could dissect our fight the other week because it was something I never got to wrap around our to because fight? we we did a virtual episode yeah. right after what mm-hmm. had went down. And it was, I felt you conned me in my time when you sold me on a good time. <sighs> And so here's the thing. If you have a BFF, I think that communication is key. And I apologize to you. Lizzie (laughs) has been going through a lot, right? So I want to be like a good supportive friend. And she was saying the Dole Whip that we had experienced at Six Flags Magic Mountain was all that was giving her purpose and joy and a sense of uh, lightness throughout the dark time in her life. These are facts. And so we discovered that there was indeed Dole Whip near my house in California. Mm -hmm. And she was like, oh my God after the podcast let's have a date let's go have some fun let's like go out there and live our lives i did say that and so i was like perfect let's go get dole whip let's go get some lunch let's Mm -hmm. have some fun Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. i said yes to all of that and then we leave recording the podcast lizzie has still sold me on the idea i'm like all right we're going and i get in the car and we park we drive separately because the first red flag should have been she goes well i have to drive separately because it's already like on my way home so we'll just meet there and i I go oh okay oh, and then okay. <laughs> and then we get there and I was like oh we I'm starving like, and I don't want to do dessert before I do lunch and she goes well I don't have time for lunch and I was like what do you mean you don't have time for lunch I can't jump right into des- to dessert I'm not like that kind of girl like yeah. I, I don't want to spoil my appetite experts would say <laughs> I conned you into this and mission. so then we get to the place where, that sells the Dole Whip and I was like well I'm just not going to do it because I, I have to eat lunch it was like 2 p.m. and I was starving and she goes okay i'll get two to go and i was like what and you're like yeah i'll get two to go and i was like oh so you're getting them for joe yeah and you have to go home so they don't melt and well, that's no, why it wasn't you can't so they don't with melt. Me. It, no no it was because i can't leave joe alone with jelly for that long and then i'm like well can we just get food quickly and she goes well no i have to pick up the boys jersey mics on the way home we do do jersey mics on mondays that is the thing i do for the boys but he, I apologize to you. I, I you drove all the way out of okay. my house. Tell the and then we got in a house. scream fight in the parking lot where there's a parking attendant because he's charging everyone for parking. <laughs> and I'm like, you conned me out of my time. I don't even and think I had an argument. I think I was just shouting to shout because I do love a public screaming match. And I didn't even realize how loud we were. It was like playfully <laughs> fighting, but we were both screaming. Like yeah, it was inappropriate. Because we were across the parking lot from each other screaming at the top of our legs. No, no. Which I love doing. And then I saw the parking attendant looking at us and I said, oh, we need to stop. Oh, he was looking at us? Mm-hmm, of course. That's embarrassing. We were screaming. Uh, see, you know, I think when you're having a nice scream fight in public, that's <laughs> nobody's business. You Like, it's like when you scream and cry in your car, nobody can hear it. If you're having a screaming fight in public, nobody can hear it. Hmm. Um, but that's, I texted you. I said, listen, you're right. I bamboozled your sweet little ass into accompanying me to Sloan's because I was afraid to go alone for and obvious I, reasons. She couldn't find it by herself. She didn't no, know where it No, I park. know where it is. No, I don't think you do. I've been. I went there to pick up some apples one time. Weird. No, caramel apples. They have, they're like the only place that has good caramel apples. Okay. <laughs> What are you doing now? Well, I had a follow up on last week because we were talking about Pride Week and Target and yeah. how they really go all out for Pride. Yeah, silly geese. And somebody in our comments really shook me to the core. Why? Because they said, I went to a Target near my house for years in search of a simple Pride flag. You know what they told me? Our Only the Targets in major cities carry Pride stuff. Is that the end of the comment? She said, it shouldn't be optional. I find it annoying that they only support it now, years after it was important and relevant for them to care. I just find it fascinating how big their pride campaign is, but business is still business, being that oh. like in small towns where they know nobody's going to buy the SKUs, there's no setup of pride material. Yeah. Which I- just confirms that it is a transaction. It's not like, oh... We target are the most prideful people in the well, world. Well, even beyond that, you see who these companies support financially. And more often than not, it's people who are anti-gay rights. And when I say anti-gay rights, I mean like people who don't recognize gay marriage as something that should be legalized. Legal. Yeah. 
and that's pretty fucking wild but they'll take your money honey uh, yeah i mean i and I, this isn't even just to like shit on target because no I, it's I also, every but it's I, most corporations I, that do it i understand a business model like yeah. why would you in like a super a town that's uh, against like legalizing gay marriage why would you put skews on your shelf that are just going to go bad well i do know why because if you're outwardly projecting that message you should still outwardly you should project actually the project the message but, but they're not projecting a message they're they're looking for sales and their business so i yeah. understand but it just v- it, validifies what i was saying and why i hate the capitalization of pride yeah. month which then makes me go icky or what's the dog <laughs> his name is icky but it gives you the ick. it gives me the and ick. there's a difference between ick and icky so have you been seeing the icky on tiktok or what gives you the ick i just heard yeah. about it yeah so uh, but- what gives you the ick you <laughs> You clapping for yourself at the end of a fucking yoga class? No, I'm clapping for the collective. Right, but are you? Yes, I am. Because <laughs> a few weeks ago, you were upset that the collective might be a little bit more skilled at yoga than you. Oh. <laughs> Do you have anything that makes you anxious that shouldn't make you anxious? Like, unrealistically anxious? Because... Everything. Are you should... Like, everything. Well, me specifically, like, I... I realized how crazy this trait was when I was leaving this house for California. What? Mm, it was just going to be nasty to you. I bet you have a lot of things that are absurd that make you anxious. Because sometimes I sit here very patiently while you're anxious about something. I'm like, I don't what do you know. mean? It's like, I don't know. It could be as simple as. Yeah, I want to know. Us in us in not being the exact same size in the frame. Well, no, I was like all the I was all you could see, <laughs> and it is like if you flew all the way to Colorado, I think that our picture should look pretty. I concur. I concur. So I. But feel that's like, like a bad example. It's like I can't think of it because it's such a petty a petty situation that I could never consider that I would never assume anybody would have an anxiety about. But you're off the Richter scale. Well, bec- <laughs> I was asking your opinion. You're like no, no, I can't not this, see it. not just this. I'm talking about like this is the only example i could think of because i've been up since five o'clock in the morning well okay i'm bringing this to you because i have one of my own i'm sure you do is what i'm saying i'm a fucking nutso about my next video whenever it is for whatever it is it's like once i have footage i am like a prisoner of my house because i'm afraid if i leave my house the house will be robbed then my footage will be stolen then the project i've spent 20 to 40 hours on is going to be lost forever so i'm making copies on three different hard drives i'm hiding the hard drives like one in my bag that i'm taking drives? with me hiding yes. you take a hard drive with you of course because this is crazy that's what i mean this it's is like, a little bit like your childhood ocd it probably is an extension of yeah. that for sure but it's also a fear of losing what i have worked on and i'm like if i lose this project like i'm now emotionally tied to this project especially like the vlogs because i spend so much time and energy caring for the next video yeah. that it's like oh my gosh if i were to lose that then like i'm going to be destroyed and devastated well it's also a financial loss right so i mean i I guess so that's not how i think about it though it's more so that like i'm proud of the video that i'm making so like i never feel free until like the video is uploaded onto youtube like i'm even like oh i shouldn't go to yoga until the video is uploaded so that i know it's on a safe like cloud somewhere (laughs) but it's like to such extreme lengths that i need to like have looked into and your 914 posting Oh, yeah. I always posted a 14. Yeah. A 14. Uh, well, typically it's 12, 14. Yeah. The way you just said that, like, I, oh, yeah, I always posted a 14. Yeah. Even Don't we like, always posted a 14? Even if it's a branded video, my agent will be like, oh, when should I let them know the video is going live? I'm like, well, 12, 14, of course. 12, 14. <laughs> 12 14 12 14 12 14 well, the you just pod- start saying oh, it never stop saying the it. podcast is 9 14 yeah the vlogs are 12 14 oh yeah important distinctions <laughs> different different things still 14s nonetheless yeah yeah, 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 yeah yeah i wish it was always a 7 14 in the morning that's way too early oh why why do you want because i'm up and i would like to you know watch it okay <laughs> so do you have anything that you like ruin your life over that's really not the something that needs to be that when i have an appointment that i don't want to go to i i will obsess over it for six weeks in advance and assume it's that day every day like you had to leave the podcast guys the podcast has to be short because i gotta go to my dentist appointment yeah, and i literally did not have a dentist appointment for six weeks i have to leave to go to the airport my and flight's every, tomorrow every <laughs> and every fucking week for six weeks i gotta go no the dentist appointment is for sure this monday you crazy bitch <laughs> that's what i mean you need to manage your like do you not look at your calendar we're gonna run out of space be right back <laughs> do i not look at my calendar Okay. And we're back. Yeah, I live every... Okay. I live every day like it's a dentist day. 
And we all should, quite frankly. Y'all should be <laughs> flossing and brushing like the dentist is today. And I can't commit to anything to save my life. Even with a workout class, God forbid, I could never do the night before. I can't commit to that. That drives me crazy. Well, because I got to know like the state, the status of my stomach in the morning. Do I shit before the class starts? Like, I can't book an Orange Theory class if I haven't shit yet. Like, yeah. I have to execute what's going on in my digestive system to make sure that I can perform optimally optimally at one of these classes i mean you know what my thoughts and prayers are now directed at you thank you it's hard living up in here all right let's get on to some iced tea there's not much of it this week oh really well yeah britney spears getting married isn't much iced tea for well you? i'm saying the quantity isn't that much right. i'm not saying the quality well, isn't you, there did you see her ex-husband storming the fucking castle i saw the headline what in the fuck so i saw some of the live footage of it and he's like hi i'm jason alexander i'm britney spears's first husband i'm storming the castle i was not invited to this i britney like literally what what was he going to do once inside i don't know but the amount of times he told people he wasn't supposed to be there was too damn many and the amount of time it took security to grab his ass was way too many and what's he doing now he's in jail for how long i don't know but they moved him up to napa county on some other charges too because he's spiraling interesting i don't even remember that a segment of her life jason alexander yeah it was who her, is that it was her first marriage i think he's some shady piece of shit guy <laughs> okay based off of his actions <laughs> and what else from the wedding was a standout for you uh for me it was drew barrymore selena gomez madonna and was it donatella versace versace had made her had designed her wedding but was gown. she at the wedding as well mm -hmm. there's that picture of like all those women together and, and paris hilton and i'm just yeah. like girl and then the weirdest thing is ansel elgore or whatever was he there yes really yes in the background of one of the pictures he's just like fucking there and i'm like what is this part of me like was wondering like is this part of like an AA group of friends, kind of, you know what I mean? Like, because it was such, like, everybody made sense except for Ansel. <laughs> Ansel? Ansel. I don't even know how to well, say it. Well, I think it. the group of women that she had invited were people that she had felt supported by throughout her conservatorship. And, and I think that they're publicly. friends. I don't know if they are because Drew Barrymore, she had posted a slide on Instagram of Kate Hudson and Drew Barrymore saying like, these are two women that I always idolized and looked up to. And then Drew Barrymore, I guess, was recording her show while that was happening. And as she was exiting her stage, all of the staff was saying, Drew Barrymore, did you see what Britney Spears said? And she was like, no, I need to go collectively, like, look at it and digest what I want to say back in response because words are powerful and I want my words to be impactful. But I was like, she wants her words to be impactful. So she gets the Britney Spears interview in my like toxic way of thinking right yeah <laughs> which i'm sure You're such a cold calculated I, bitch i'm sure uh intentions were genuine but i do think that then they connected after that and that is when britney probably extended her invite because drew barrymore's show is filmed in new york city and that's where uh, she lives yeah and so she made a trek out here for this yeah um sweet they all seemed it honestly seemed like such a loving fucking aside from the amount of money that I know goes into a wedding and specifically must have gone into that one. Mm -hmm. Very down to earth wedding felt no more elaborate than a Kardashian ch child birthday party. Right. Uh, honestly, like it also it felt more down to earth than a Kardashian child's birthday party. Beautiful. Like not, that's yeah. not saying it's not beautiful. No, like, but it it's was like, stunning, but it was in her backyard. And it was it seemed like she was having the most authentic time of her fucking life. And I loved that for her. Mm -hmm. I loved her and Madonna recreating the kiss. She took her pants off for the she took her fucking party. Pants off for the party was wearing a pink bikini bottom like. I'm trying not to read into the things that are a little suspicious. Like what? Like well, her panic attack? Like what? Her panic attack. Oh, I don't think that's suspicious. I mean. Oh. Uh, I guess I had a panic attack before my wedding. Uh, we were plotting how if Joe said no to me at the altar, I was like, we're all taking our heels off and we're smack. We're like going to stab the shit out of the groom's party. <laughs> and my dad was like, don't talk like that. And I was like, either you're with me or against me, ho. <laughs> No, I did see, and these are just reports. I have no true if, or no uh, way to know if these are valid or not. But I guess for months they're going back and forth about like the prenup, which is normal. Like you have yeah. to figure that out no matter what. And money's a tricky thing. Obviously, Brittany has money to protect. Yeah. Um. So hopefully they they squared that away. But they didn't. From what I read, they didn't. Um. They didn't 
write their own vows. They did repeat after me vows, mm. which I thought was interesting. Maybe it's because they're like shy and they exchanged words uh, of love and affirmation before or after the ceremony. I think it can be a lot of pressure to do that in front of a group of people. I don't want to do it. Yeah. But I do think it's like you, you guys did your own vows. We did both. Right. Yeah, but it was beautiful. The gown was beautiful. It looks like fun was had all mm -hmm. around. I had fun scrolling through all of yeah. the photos of the unexpected guests. Selena Gomez was Such there. Such a weird, crazy weird world. invite list. <laughs> I, I wish I was invited. <laughs> I would have had fun. <laughs> I honestly wish her the best, and I hope that everyone had fun, and I hope that the people that did show up for her can be positive impacts on her life or yeah. be people that she can call uh, if she needs guidance in any direction, yeah. because I'm sure a lot of people try to take, will try to take, once she reenters the working world, I'm sure a lot of people will try to take advantage of her like contractually or, you know, I just hope she yeah. makes like smart business decisions because like, I don't know how to like read a contract. So I just hope she has like a good lawyer around mm -hmm. her and with all these other powerful women in the industry, hopefully they also have great advice for her and yeah. like making boss business woman moves. Hell yeah. And I hope she's on stage again soon. I love nothing more than her Vegas show. Yeah. I think she said she was going to chill for a little bit. Yeah. As she should. Yeah. But I mean, if she wants to work again, You'll I will be, be there. lined up at that Vegas residency. Ugh, I wish that wasn't your and Shane's thing. Because I'd be like, let's go. You could go with me. <gasps> I would go back to back to back. Oh, I love that for us. <laughs> <laughs> so Britney Spears got married and then there's the Scream movie drama. Yeah, so Nev Campbell, mm -hmm. uh Sydney Prescott, the Sydney Prescott, the face of the entire yeah. franchise had announced that she was backing out of being in the next installment of the franchise because she felt what they had offered her financially was not in line to what she had They offered her less money than she had on previous films, which is fucking wild a punch to the gut i mean yeah. i understand that they're bringing fresh blood in mm -hmm. and maybe she's no longer the star of the movie but she still is the driving force in what made she's, the franchise successful yeah she is the mother of the franchise and how fucking dare you even if she's making a cameo she you don't fucking reduce her her pay yeah. You just can't do that. With the last one being a hit financially, I just can't fathom that they wouldn't meet her halfway because I'm sure there yeah. was a lot of back and forth and pushing for a minimum of what she wanted. And then she finally had to stand up for herself, yeah. which is like gut wrenching to walk away from what was probably the biggest success of her career. I don't know that that's true, but it's a huge, I don't know it's her a role huge it's, cultural but it's like icon. Scream yeah. is it's scream. It's iconic. And it's yeah. like to walk away from the franchise franchise that's a big deal like i i don't know if i would be able to be like i might take the pay reduction to be a part of something but then you have a bitter taste in it that's, forever but that's the whole thing with your 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 pay once you drop it then it's that's your dropped. quote yeah because yeah in the film industry you have a quote yeah and that like that's why a lot of traditionally movie stars didn't like to do tv or if you do a tv guest star you can't just accept a lower rate because no. then that's your rate yeah. is whatever the lowest you've last accepted um she had a few people uh stick up for her um who was it matthew lillard he was in the one of the first ones was he invited back for this next one no he's dead his character is dead oh Spoiler alert. When did he die? Last In the last one? No, in the first one. Oh, he well was then. the killer in the first one. <laughs> See, and I just rewatched these movies and I'm like, who's that? Well, I don't <laughs> know his real Stu. name. Okay. Um, and he was just, he spoke out about it and said that. Yeah, he it was, was like, cool. good for her. It also makes me think about the first movie where fucking Sid punches Gail in the face because mm -hmm. Gail's like, I'll send you a copy. And then like, they're all laying around and Rose McGowan is like recreating it. She's like, I'll send you a copy. Bam, bitch went down. I'll send you a copy. Bam, Sid, super bitch. And it just makes me think like, that's her like socking this franchise in the face. Like mm -hmm. you just made a shit ton of money. Pay the woman her worth. I agree. Also in re like now with all of this going like hella public, 
You should really pay her. It's not too late to make a counter offer. I'm not saying she has to no, accept it. No, she might but be... you better make that counter offer and you better do it in public because we hate you now. <laughs> the fandom is fucking pissed. They are. I've saw I've seen a lot of people posting on their Instagram stories yeah. enraged about this. Uh Jamie Kennedy also weighed in saying, How can you make scream without Sydney? Uh saying it's crazy that people aren't paying money to the literal face of the franchise. Yeah. My question is like Courtney Mama, where are you at? Like I oh, she's not at she's not being outspoken about it. Well, I don't know. I, to my knowledge, I haven't seen her be. Mm. She might be behind scenes. And I don't think it's anyone's responsibility to leave their role if they're satisfied satisfied with their pay for another person but i would like to well that's like collective bargaining like that's how you everybody succeeds and that's why like unions are important because if if we're a unified front and we want more money if we both threaten to walk we're both more likely to get the money the problem is they're probably negotiating it's not like a tv show that's going on it's not like right. friends that happens more on on tv shows but yeah. I, you know a franchise is like i would still hope that behind closed doors there's people in this current cast that are vocalizing their distaste mm -hmm. for this decision i don't know i bet courtney's probably I'm, this is all speculation i bet she's happy with her pay because she's like i i, I can't imagine do you think they're offering courtney more than they offered sydney because she is Courtney, Courtney Cox. Cox. I don't know, but I'll ask her at the next Crossroads event. <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding. Their kids graduated. I'll never see her again. Courtney! But honestly, I don't fault her for, like, it's not her. It, uh, like, it's no one else's has to step down because yeah. she, cause Neve did. I just think Neve. Neve. Sorry. God damn. Oh, my God. Neve. Whatever. You know what gives me irrational anxiety? <laughs> you could speak names yourself. <laughs> No. Um, Hayden Panettiere will be in the next movie though which Hayden? I think is yeah uh, which I think is a saving grace for a lot of people like I think yes uh, people are going to be pissed that Nev isn't mm -hmm. in it but I think people really Hayden was a fan favorite so yeah. I think people will be like oh well I do want and maybe that's what the producers thought is like well we have Hayden coming back and she was a fan favorite so maybe we don't need to pay it's also fucked up that would be the dumbest producer thought process ugh you guys. Mm. Ugh. Mm. Ugh. Mm. Okay. Should we get into some advice, advice though? Sure. All right. Uh, this <laughs> first one was a submission asking, am I the asshole? Okay. So first of all, I love you guys. So my mother passed away unexpectedly last year and I have been living in her home for the past five years. She, have, she has lived elsewhere during this time. We had a verbal rent to own agreement with our lawyer, but nothing official yet. I have two sisters. When mom died, she did not have a will. My sisters decided that they would not honor the agreement. I decided to try to buy the home. I worked with a lender and got my credit up and did this all in less than a year finally we are at the end uh, close to closing on the house and i find out that the home needs ten thousand dollars in repairs so i offered to pay for it to take a cut out of my third of my inheritance and they would not lose any of their share her siblings they have just informed me that they have decided not to sell the home to a cash buyer so that they can get more money out of it. I feel bullied and ganged up on and just stressed. I have uprooted my life. It's possible I may lose my dogs. I have a rash all over my body. I'm just so mad and done with them both. So am I the asshole because I want to walk away from the relationship? I feel like now that mom is gone and I'm on my own, I can't fight them. So I guess I will cut them out of mm -hmm. my life. Uh, any advice is appreciated. I thank you for taking the time to read this. Mm. Oh, that breaks my fucking heart. I don't know what it is, but there is something about a uh, death of a person who's like one of the matriarch or patriarchs of a family that really makes everybody lose their bananas. And I'm so sorry you're going through that. It's not, mm. it, it, you would think at times like this, families would rally around each other. And more often than not, you hear about people disputing wills or verbal agreements or what have you. And Money's it, nuts. It really fucking is. It really is. And it doesn't seem that the other two sisters had an interest in buying their mother's home. Mm -mm. Rather, they wanted to get a bigger paycheck for the home so that their inheritance would be larger. Yeah. Um, it's sad to me that you guys couldn't get together and verbally work this out. Yeah. It's, it's also like... Uh, I hear a lot of people saying money could really change my life. And the fact of the matter is it can't. You can change your life when you change yourself on the inside and you can have money and you can still be a miserable piece of shit. Mm. And m I have found that most people who like come into money really quickly get out of money really quickly. 
and they're still left at the rock bottom pitiful fucking place that they were before nasty and upset because karma's a bitch and if you're not well on the inside money's not going to make you well on the outside i know that for a fucking fact and mm. you spend it really quick the hard thing is to rationalize with the people that are your family doing that to you mm -hmm. i think if you if I don't know if uh, this has been solidified that you're not getting the house, but I do think that maybe this is the world's world and giving you a blessing. Who knows what kicking you, although it's going to be very sad to have to leave that house, it might be a healthy, fresh new start for you and it might open up doors that you never had imagined. I would honestly, as mad as you are with your family, try to sit them down and come to a place that you guys can collectively be together because there is nothing more special than like family yeah. and if you can salvage your relationship with uh, your sisters I feel like you should try to do so but if they're just not willing to come to the table in any regard I think uh... I know I it's like you know everybody's hurting right now and money is a hell of a drug and I do think that what Rylan said stands sitting down and with brutal honesty about your emotional pain in regards to the situation might be really helpful like pull all of your anger out of the moment and just express yourself honestly like listen ladies this is what I've been doing this was the agreement I had with mom I am devastated at the way that this is transgressing I if it's true if you love them I love you both my family means more to me than this. You're not the asshole for wanting to walk from the situation. M mental sanity is worth more than the money you're going to get from this property. So if, if you need to walk, walk. That doesn't make you an asshole. But if you feel the relationship with your sisters is valuable and worth saving, like if, if they're not like the wicked stepsisters of Cinderella, mm -hmm. have the talk. If they're the wicked stepsisters of Cinderella... Fuck that. Yeah, it would just be a bummer because you don't, I mean, losing, I can't imagine losing a parent and I would imagine it would be better to go through that with people you share memories with. Mm -hmm. Like, I think I hear a lot of people when they get older and even like my grandma, when mm -hmm. like people she knew started passing, it's like, well, a, par a portion of you starts to go too because now you have no one to mm -hmm. uh, remember your memories with. Yeah. And so I think if you can salvage the relationship, it would be good and find the root of why they think they're being slighted by yeah. you as well. Yeah. Um, because if it's the difference of, ten thousand dollars or that they're going to make a little bit more money on the house maybe you could give a little bit more of your inheritance if the house means that much to you like if they're like oh well we have an offer for 10 grand over maybe the 10 grand that you could take out of your inheritance would be worth it because like lizzie says if the house is so important to you the money's not really going to matter at the end if the house is a home mm -hmm. for your forever life mm -hmm. um but I, I know us saying like go talk to your family it's like oh it's hard and it's scary but like more often than not I find being honest about your emotions as opposed to being angry and punitive gets you really far. Well, you also make up, I'm not saying you, but like people, if you don't address something with someone, you start to craft narratives as to why the other person is doing something. Mm -hmm. I think it's natural human behavior. Like if I have like a little tiff with someone in my life and I don't just address it, I start going down the rabbit hole of like assuming what they're thinking, which got them to this point. Yeah. And then I feel like I build a story in my head that's not even accurate. Oh, it's awful. Had I just gone to them and they be truthful to me i didn't spend days or weeks wasting my time thinking about how this person slighted me it's like go directly to the source if you can yeah and just like ugh, family is so special so i hope that you can make up with them and if it's not too late to try to get the house i would try to go about getting the house in a way that's not like that doesn't seem because doesn't seem selfish to you on their behalf because yeah. i think they probably feel slighted in some way yeah ple about this. plead your case understand that they're coming from a place of fear and pain mm -hmm. and so are you quite frankly fear and pain everybody's in pain everybody's in pain right. treat everybody as if they are in pain because they are 
Okay, our next submission comes from a 22-year-old female. She says she has been with her boyfriend, who's 23, for almost seven years. Mm, That's Um, a long time. She said, I'm absolutely in love with him, and I'm constantly dreaming about traveling, getting married, babies, the works. We're going away together for the first time since COVID, and we decided five days away to Paris. My roommates have speculated that he plans on proposing, and I got really excited about the idea. I thought he was going to propose last time we went on a a weekend away in the countryside, side but obviously it didn't happen I didn't tell him about this and he was surprised to hear how disappointed I was and promised that he will but won't tell me when Um, his mom has already told him that he's not to propose yet because we're too young for that they're 22 and 23 yeah my mom doesn't her mom doesn't see anything wrong with them getting engaged now and leaving the wedding until after they graduate college in two to three years Um, in fact she has informed her boyfriend her mom has informed her boyfriend that she can use uh, the engagement ring um, that she first got proposed to with so he doesn't even have to buy an engagement ring and she said she can't help agree with her mom Um, um, this girl has jokingly said that she'd propose to her boyfriend instead, um, but he wants to be the one to do that. And he agrees with his mom that they are just too young to get engaged right now. So she says a small part of her feels deep down. It has something, he has something planned for the trip and he will propose to her, um, but she doesn't want to get her hopes up for something that probably won't happen. So is she crazy for wanting to get engaged at 22? She asks. I don't think she's crazy for it, but I do think chill out. But it's hard because I even remember when you were at a point in your life where you're like, Joe needs to propose. I was 28. Yeah, but how long had you, had you guys been together? Like six years. And they've been together seven years. I also understand, like, I do think getting married at 22, like, I don't think, mo- like. But re- subtract seven from 22 and you're a teenager. I know. Like, they're not. F- a young teenager. And in you're your, like 14, I right? I think you change the most in your 20s. Yeah. So you guys would either get married and grow together or grow apart. And mm-hmm. that is a gamble for sure. So somebody like his mom is just saying like, there's nothing, uh, there, you're not taking away from your relationship if you're not getting engaged yeah. this moment. And in fact, if you're 28 and still head over heels for each other, get married, go for it. When I was 22, I was with the guy I had been with for maybe five years Mm -hmm. and we were talking about marriage all the time we were talking about getting married we were talking about the rest of our lives we were talking about kids and we grew up like people change i'm not saying you're gonna grow up and grow apart but i am saying que sera sera enjoy the present moment because you can get so caught up in expectation that you miss every beautiful thing in front of you right now. And And I'm saying this because you are 22. And what I struggle with, like, I agree. Like, if from an outsider's perspective, I would say, wait. But take away the age standpoint, being with Mm -hmm. Joe for six years and you're ready for a ring. Like, I'm ready for a ring because Joe's 10 years older than me. And I want a family with kids and I want a family with kids with him. And that means it's urgent. I'm just saying I understand being, I understand being with somebody for seven years and thinking it's time. Like we've been together for seven years. I feel valid in this relationship. Absolutely. I know in my gut, this is what I want for the rest of my life. I think if he's not meeting you there, he either is being cautious or he's not head over heels because I do think had I been in a healthy relationship for seven years Mm -hmm. at 20, I would get engaged. Uh, Like you can call off an engagement worst comes to worst. Yeah. And, and, but I also see an engagement as I'm, I'm already making the promise. If I'm going to accept an engagement ring, it's because I'm, I'm going to marry you. So it's, you know, and it's going to happen. It's going to happen. I know. I'm just trying not to take away from how she's feeling right now because I also oh, yeah. understand. I totally like, get it. I totally get it. At and one point, I'm saying. I thought Shane was going to propose on one of our Mexico trips mm-hmm. and he felt the vibe too. And we got there. He's like, just so you know, I'm not going to propose. And there was like a little bit of devastation, yeah. even though I knew it was coming. Like I knew that didn't mean we weren't getting engaged. But oh, I ruined still multiple like, engagements uh, before I got engaged. And so I'm just saying like, I'm not taking away how you feel because it no, is seven years real. is a big feat. Yeah. And I do feel if he was as jazzed up about it as you you guys probably would be engaged that's just me because like in utah that is a norm like people get married at 20 they have two kids by 25 Mm -hmm. and that is their life right and there's nothing right about it there's nothing wrong about it but 
I would just have a serious, serious conversation with him if this means the world to you. Uh, and as a person who's literally ruined multiple engagement opportunities for myself after not listening to my now husband say, chill your bill, bitch. I wish I had chilled my bill after he told me to chill my bill. Well, if his intentions are really that he's ha- yeah. like, I would talk to him and say, like, I don't want to waste my time. Mm-hmm. If you don't want to get engaged right now, I will come to terms with that. But I want to know you're in it all the way. It sounds like he is. He's saying I'm going to do it. Yeah. So uh, it doesn't seem like she's sure, though, that right. he is, because I think the actions are what she's seeking and that's not happening. Yeah. I'll, from my vantage point, it sounded a little bit like she she wants it now and she and she doesn't want to wait. And that's what she's wanting. But I I don't think I I, I don't think you're crazy because, again, like we both had the same fucking feelings. I think that's totally normal feeling. But I am saying to you, don't get wrapped up in your crazy. Enjoy your time. Enjoy your present tense. And when the future comes, it'll be your present. Yeah. And if it does work out, it's going to be fantastic. If it doesn't, it's because it wasn't meant to be. Yeah. And yeah, I do think But it it sounds like it's going to work out. Like Mm. it sounds like it's going to work out. Yeah. Well, so just relax. I wish you the best. If he does propose on the vacation, be sure to uh, reply to that email so that we know and we can hear how it all went down. But no matter what, have fun. Yeah. That's really exciting. If you're not having fun, what are you doing? <laughs> you're coughing on an airplane with your mask down. That's what you're doing. And even those people probably having fun. Having a great time. <laughs> because movies. they're not doing it under the restriction of their mask. Like, <laughs> I'm right. trying to talk to my baby. Are we rolling out? I can't see that far, but does that say 29? It says 26. Okay. So I have one more that could just be like, it's like an appreciation. It's, oh, it's yeah. a thank you to an advice. She oh, says, yeah. inspired. I love y'all so much. I've been watching, or I've been a Shane fan for so long and have been binging the sip. It's my new favorite. I wanted to say I graduated nursing school in May of 2021, um, and she was immediately shoved into the COVID unit. I was traumatized and saw things I still have nightmares about. I've been stuck in a toxic work environment, taking on way more than I should have to. I was working pretty much every weekend and never had time to spend with family. I was so miserable that I would dread going to work and cry every night before uh, work. I thought I didn't have any options and should just stick it out. But one morning I was listening to The Sip and I heard Lizzie talking about toxic work environments. And she said, if your job is toxic, uh, you can't let it go. uh, And you can't let it go when you go home. Get the fuck out. She said that same day she put in applications on Indeed, not sponsored, and started her and she started her new nursing job on Monday. She said it's way better pay. It's a better schedule and a much healthier work environment. So she just said, I love y'all. And I much I needed that much. I needed that push. Fuck yeah, dude. Fuck yeah. That's what I'm talking about. It is so much better to go into the discomfort of change than it is to survive forever in something you fucking hate. And like we were just saying, fun is the point. Like if you're not yep. enjoying it, it's not worth it. And for this and for her, it is like she put herself out there. She found a better paying job yeah. with a better schedule and has a healthy work environment. There is and that's the thing. It's like if you can dream it, Go for it. Mm. Yeah. If you can articulate what it is you want, start reverse engineering it and make it what you have. And I love that she didn't quit her job before she got the Mm -hmm. next one. She put in the extra hours, got off work when she was miserable and tired Mm -hmm. and hungry and submitted these applications and got a new one and was able to change her life. So it's never too late to change your life. With that, we're going to run out of time. We're going to change our lives. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> I'm really just going to change my shirt. That's all we're doing. <laughs> and we'll be right back for you. It's a whole week. Um, all right, you guys, thank you so much for watching and supporting our show. If you want to follow us on social media, we're at the sip official. We're also on there personally. We love you so much. Thanks for your continued support. We'll see you next week. Goodbye. And, and that's, that's the, the sip. sip. <sighs> also sound off in the comments below. If you feel us looking in the viewfinder, I don't. Oh, okay. I want to know. All right. I want to know. Did we seem absent? Cause I was here emotionally. And also kind of trying to see myself. (laughs) Because I feel like I look like an orangutan the way I'm sitting. (laughs) 